This is a capybara. Capybara or capybara? Capybara. capybara. I think in English is capybara. Yeah, capybara in English. It's a rodent, but it's the size of a pig, and there's lots of them in this city. morning from Brazil. It's another gloriously sunny day here, but I wanted to come outside before we started today, before we went anywhere, because this morning, at 8 o'clock in the morning, it was 5 degrees Celsius. I've never felt anything like that before in Brazil, in the South American tropics. 5 degrees Celsius. Right now I think it's climbed up a little bit because it's 9 in the morning now. It's about 6 degrees Celsius. I wanted to feel it for myself. It's like being in Scotland in winter. I can't believe it. It's so weird. Anyway, next to the hotel here, there's some crazy like, dinosaurs and stuff. I guess it's like a kid's play park. But some of the animals here are kind of creepy looking, like, like these, uh, these rabbits down here. What are they all about? Well, they aim and they've got some pals over here, look. They look a bit weird. I think this is a kids play park. There's a giant one up there, which is most certainly creepy. Look at that. <laughs> uh, it's like, yeah, definitely a kids play park. And then they've got like kind of woodland creatures and stuff. A tree or something there. Mushrooms. And then a random dinosaur. You see my breath in the air. That only happens in cold places. Bizarre. And then maybe appropriately, I would never imagine this would be appropriate in a place like Brazil, but there's snowmen down there. I definitely seem to be in a parallel universe right now where Brazil is a cold country. And Scotland, where I left a couple of days ago, was hot. The world has flipped upside down. Wow. Anyway, it's breakfast time. I'm gonna get a munch, and then we're gonna head out into the city of Curitiba. Oh, it's chilly, I'm gonna need a jacket. I have had fruit to start with, but I'm having sausage casserole again and scrambled eggs on bread for breakfast. All good. <laughs> Look at Tekka's jumper for her nephew's first birthday party. Snoopy! I'm not going to film any of the birthday party because it's a family affair. It's, it's a Snoopy theme. Yeah, I was going to say that because people might not understand what they have. Yeah, well, it's not, like <laughs> it's not a random Snoopy. It's like a Snoopy themed um, party. And there's going to be lots of Snoopy stuff, so she bought that specially. I think it looks cute. Yeah. We've come to the park. Which park is this one? Barigui. 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 This park is... Oh, uh, we came here particularly to see the iconic animal of Curitiba, which you find all around Brazil. But it's a bit of an icon of the city of Curitiba, the capybara. The capybara is actually a rodent. It's the largest rodent in the world. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's the size of a pig. And I can see a bunch of them right now in front of me. Oh, the swans are coming over to us. Geese. A bunch of them over there, look. Mm. On that island. It's capybaras. See on the island there? Right there. There's a bunch of like geese over there, the white geese. They're in the middle there. That's a capybara in the sun. Right there. Oh. Quite cute little kid things, aren't they? They're all sleeping. But you're not supposed to touch them. You're not supposed to go near them because they're protected, but also they have ticks. But I can see a bunch of them on the island over there. Cool if they were a bit closer though.
stick in the sunshine. Managed to find a little spot around the lake where there's some capybaras right close to the water. There's one right down here, just a little baby one. We've got a bigger friend over there as well. If I get up and close I can take a nice, nice little photo, but I need to get moving because I'm late. But that was cool. Got to see them up and close and personal. Wow. Right down here under this tree, there's a pair of big birds of prey. They look like some kind of eagle or hawk. I'm not sure which ones. They're not like the other kind of common um, urubus, which are the vultures that you get around the, the lake here. That's pretty cool. What a, what a beautiful day it's turning out to be. This is a gorgeous park. So much wildlife. Time since we arrived in Brazil on this trip that I felt warmth in the sun. How bizarre. But that's the thing with Brazil in the south, I think, is it can be very cold in the winter, but there's big variations when the sun's out in the middle of the day, it can also be you know like 20 degrees Celsius. We actually came here before and sat in the grass, I don't know if you remember. A long time ago. I flew the drone and got like a good view of the whole city. We did, we sat here. I might be able to find that footage and put it on screen right now. We're back walking in the Santa Felicidade neighborhood today. It's a lovely sunny day and actually kind of warm in the sun. 17 degrees Celsius, so it's climbed quite a lot. It's the first time I've really been walking here to see some of the other houses that are around here, but many of the houses are the original state of the original Italian immigrants that came here. There's a very old traditional Italian restaurant here, a famous one called Madaloso, from a fam family called Madaloso, right here. This is the original one, but over there, some years ago, after they got success here, they opened that one across the street, which apparently is the biggest restaurant in all of Latin America. Apparently it seats like 3,000 people or something ridiculous. A big famous Italian place, but also the original one of the same place, the same owners, right here. I'm not sure we're going to have time to check it out because we've got another place booked in, but no, we are going kind to of cool. One. This one? Yeah. Oh, we are. <coughs> Sorry, I got confused. We are actually going to the original Madaloso. Oh, so full, but I'm going to try a dessert here, which is basically cheese and guava. Cheese and guava. And they call it a Romeo and Juliet here. It's like sweet and salty together. I'm not sure what type of cheese it is. Oh, that is very good. Wow. It's a shame I can't eat anymore. That was absolutely incredible. Very good. So full. Oh my god. That was another experience of Italian food here in Curitiba. I'm starting to learn about this Santa Felicidade neighborhood and some of the, the buildings here. That one actually there, right behind us, where the hotel is. Um, where all the kind of toy animals and rabbits are. There's like a famous old traditional Italian immigrant house. But there's just so many restaurants. You could eat every single day in this neighborhood. Santa Felicidade um, 
at a different place. You could eat at a, diff a different place every day. The food is incredible. That place that we were at was a typical Brazilian style rodizio, which means that they, you sit down and they just keep bringing food until you tell them you're full and they keep bringing different types of food. It was just, it was just really great. I really love that, but I'm so full now. I need to have a break, I think. I think I've said this in my videos before about Curitiba because I've done many videos here before from years ago. I appreciate it. I appreciate the art of the city. I appreciate the arch architecture of some of the famous um, people who have done amazing things by building the city up. Oscar Neymar. Oscar Neymar. The name. Did some cool things here. And the parks and the public transport system are all amazing, right? It seems more European to me than Latin American. It doesn't have the same Latin American flair and chaos that I'm used to from other Brazilian cities, which I love. Um, here seems a lot more, I don't know, European is the best word, but what I will say is this is a very beautiful city. A uh, bit of a contrast here, but as you can see probably behind me, it's so green. The whole city is very, very green, um, which is amazing. And the skyline is beautiful. So there is that. <laughs> Alright, finally on this trip we have come to Durigan, the wine place which is right across from the hotel we're staying. Hopefully the sound right now is not too bad because um, there's a waterfall behind me, a fake one, look. Yeah, I suppose these statues are like, I don't know, original family members of the Durigan family. Again, like many of the other places here, these are all from Italian families that did this wine place. They make their own wine here. I don't know if they grow the grapes in Brazil, probably yes. Um, but it's a wine place, it sells wine, it sells cheese, and probably like meat as well, like ham. But what is strange is they've got like Christmas decorations out and it's very far from being Christmas. Uh, we're gonna go inside the massive shop anyway and see, see what they have. We I think they kept the Christmas lights. Yeah, they didn't move them. Yeah. Well, it looks nice. Yeah, uh, you're gonna like the cheese. Something interesting, I think, and a curiosity for people who have never been to Brazil. Brazil makes wine. Who knew? Argentina is more famous as a wine producing country. And Chile. And Chile. Brazil is not famous for wine, but has some. We have a really old Ford car here, which I guess the family has always had. There's some really creepy dolls inside in this car. It's kind of cool to keep stuff like that. And they also have a huge wine barrel thing here. Durigan, since 1873. It's a long time for Brazil. Brazil is kind of like the United States of America in some ways in that it's not an old country. Uh, obviously, it's the European settlers only arrived, you know, like 500 years ago or something. Um, and so to find a business that's this old is quite interesting and unique. No idea how I never noticed this until now, but there's grapevines growing all over this place as well, right across the front, look. So yeah, the weather here does seem a bit more favourable to wine growing, to grape growing rather, not wine growing, haha, <laughs> to grape vine growing than it does in other parts of Brazil. Wow. Duriga. Oh. It's 
place as well as selling lots of wine is also like a museum. And they have a bit of a restaurant food there as well. Oi, boa noite, tudo bem? Boa noite. Eu vou tirar a ficha. O que vocês querem provar? Tá bem quente. This is like a Brazilian. Like a Brazilian milled wine. Yeah. But this is a non alcoholic one. Obrigada. Obrigado. This is like a non alcoholic mulled wine. You get the alcoholic and non alcoholic, but I'm not drinking right now, so I went for the non alcoholic one. I'm gonna give it a try. Let's see. It smells delicious. Oh wow, it's so good and sweet. Take a try it. It's very hot. It's not that bad. Very nice. It's very sweet. Very sweet. But it's delicious. In the cold of Curitiba, that is delicious. Dan Genetti for a bottle of this stuff. What's grappa? Wow. Kind of curious about the alcoholic version because the non-alcoholic is maybe one of the best mulled wines I've ever had. It is so delicious and sweet. Mmm, so good.